Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Golden Boots podcast. This is your host, Jorge Gonzalez. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. We love soccer. For episode 15, we have my man, Nando Morales. <laughs> Nando is originally from Mexico, grew up in Raleigh, and he was a Belmont Abbey player. Nando, how are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, man. Thank you uh, for making the drive from Raleigh to Charlotte exclusively just to come see us, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for hosting. <laughs> nice, man. How are you, man? How, how are things for you? Good. Um, you know, came back to visit some friends, but uh -huh. um, yeah, starting a new chapter. Um, I'm a dad now. Okay, so. man. How's dad life? Oh, it's... Give, give some papas out there some advice, man. There's some future dads. <laughs> I mean, just uh, make the most of it. Uh, make sure that you're there. Um, even sometimes, because all they're doing is pooping, <laughs> eating, and sleeping. And honestly, like, there's times where you're just like, what the heck? <laughs> um, but, no, just, like, spending time um, and just just being there. But nice. That's being cool, present. man. We, yeah. only, we don't just talk about soccer. We also give dad life on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice man so yeah our podcast what we like to do is bring on players or people in the soccer world to kind of give us their background and uh their love for the sport or how they are uh within that sport so tell us a little bit about yourself yeah so um uh when i was three years old i think um my dad so my dad played basketball um and that's what he wanted me to do. So he bought me a basketball when I was three. Really? And yeah, I remember this uh, specifically because I was curious, like, how did I get into soccer? You know? <laughs> uh -huh. um, but he said that he uh, bought a basketball, gave it to me. As soon as uh, I got it in my hands, I dropped it and started kicking it. And he knew from that point on <laughs> I was going to be a soccer player. He's um, like, I tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, – you know, came to the United States when I was uh, three, um, grew up in Raleigh, um, and my dad, uh, I mean, he didn't speak any English, and so um, I think we were just out kicking at a park one day, um, and some guy was like, hey, uh, you, we want your son to be a part of our team, and it was like a rec league. Um, out like in Cary, which was for us was like a 45 minute drive. Yeah. Um, so my dad took me um, and my dad never lets me forget this moment. But the first game um, I dribbled down the field um, halfway. I just ended up kicking the ball and they saw I had such a strong left foot that because it went over the goalie. Um, and it was like half field, so they were like, okay, this kid. Um, and then from that point on, um, some connections started to happen. Uh, went to, now it's called NCFC, but at the time it was Castle. Okay. Um, they put me in those leagues, then uh, went up because it went from rec to challenge, then to classic. Okay. Um, yeah, Damn. then started playing classic. It's and like then it's like levels on FIFA, right? I'm yeah. sure then <laughs> world class, yeah, <laughs> legendary. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was crazy how the difference of you know each each tier uh -huh. basically is is oh there's a huge gap. Um, okay, but yeah, so then it ended up playing classic. Um, uh, even even in classic, there's tiers. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, um, I started at like mid. Mid tier, and then by the time I was a senior, I ended up playing um, right below academy, um, which is like elite. Okay. So yeah, and then um, got recruited. Uh, so I didn't know any my none of my family members, you know, uh, direct and like indirect. Um, there was no one that had a scholarship for soccer, you know. So we didn't know anything about the recruiting process. Okay. Um, so it was new. Um, and I just remember like I, my, cause my junior year, I was iffy about it. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to, you know, go to college and play soccer. Yeah. But, um, towards the end I was like, crap, like I really want it. And so my senior year, you know, I dedicated, um, you know, most of my time to just getting better. Like I even cut out uh, a class. Um, I, 
my bad, but <laughs> I told them I was getting an internship. <laughs> but I use that I use that hour to train. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I mean that was your internship, man. Soccer one hundred and one, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I like really wanted it, um, and so I, you know, trained my butt off because um, the scholarship is what I was after, and um, uh, I remember sending out emails to coaches, you know. Um, trying to get on their their radar, um, but again, like you, people need to be educated on that process because mm. the way that I I thought it was was that coaches had to come to you, like they were gonna be the ones offered. Because I saw a lot of my friends that were g- playing football, they were like, oh, I received an offer from here, you know, and so I thought in my head, and this is like I, I guess my ego, but I was like, okay, like the full rides are gonna be coming to you, yeah. That was my mentality. I didn't realize that you had to go out, you know, and go to camps and continue to, like, stay on, on that and yeah. communicate to them. Um, but I was blessed yeah. because um, I was emailing coaches, and they are like, yeah, it's kind of late. <laughs> um, like, we already have our, our recruits in and stuff. Um, but I remember there was a tournament that we were hosting. It's a college showcase. Uh-huh. Uh, it's huge. Um, like teams from Canada come and play, so okay. yeah, it's a big tournament. Um, and I remember because I, I my top choice was um, Queens University. Okay. Um, and then uh, I looked into some uh, colleges down in Florida, but Queens University my, was my number one. Mm-hmm. And so I specifically emailed them like, "Hey, come come watch my game and stuff." Um, and they came. Um, I didn't put out the best showing, okay. and so I was like, "Freak!" Like, yeah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna recruit me. But um, they actually ended up emailing me, but um, they didn't offer me anything. But okay. then I saw in another email, um, Belmont Abbey, the, the head coach there, uh, really wanted me to come on a visit. Um, so the following week went to, um, Belmont Abbey to visit, uh-huh. see the campus, ended up training. Um, I think I put on a really good showing Okay, and then he, he offered me, um, a scholarship, uh, like three, three or four days later. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. And so, um, ended up going to Belmont Abbey. Um, actually, at, a week after that, I had signed up for a college showcase, you uh-huh. know, that had other coaches come okay. in. And I also put on a good showing. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I, I, I you know, um, told, I had verbally committed to Belmont Abbey. Okay. Um, but yeah. a bunch of coaches were t- asking me, like, hey, are, are you with anyone? Like, are, have you committed anywhere? And my coach, uh, my club coach, he ended up telling all those coaches oh, okay. that uh, that I had already been committed, and to basically leave me alone. <laughs> and, which sucks because I wanted to explore options, yeah. but at the same time, like I am grateful yeah. that that I went to. Belmont well, you were just Abbey. destined to be there, man. That yeah. that was the thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So for for those people that don't know a little bit about uh, e- either that recruiting process, because even when like players say hi i received an offer okay you received it but you still went and like communicated with these people to come watch you or emailed them so like you still did the work yeah so yeah there's that mindset where like oh like what you just said like a lot of players think oh i received an offer which means that like they randomly like emailed you and most of the time it's not like that right yeah yeah so tell us a little bit about that more and more in terms of uh, a college showcase like what is that actually for players like maybe that in the future want to try something like that? Yeah, so um, you know, stay on top of uh, of emailing and reaching out to coaches. Uh, mm-hmm. There's there's obviously some rules that they have to follow. They yeah. can't communicate directly back, but um, yeah, email them to make sure that you know they're you're on their radar because mm. um, they're 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 seeing those emails. You know. Um, I I ended up you know being able to watch some of my uh, my assistant coach do the recruiting process and what that looked like and stuff and so he's reading those emails um, but you gotta make sure that you're you're staying on top of that because you know if as soon as they see that you're not interested in them they're gonna move on to the next recruit because mm-hmm. there's just as good players you know yeah. that come in and replace you 
Um, and, and that's one thing, you know, that, that coaches look for. It's like, are you the right fit? Yeah. You know, because you can be talented. And trust me, I've seen some really talented players. But if your character doesn't match with their, you know, their playing style, their – because um, it's also not on the field, like it's off the field. Yeah. You know, there's a culture that most colleges have. Hundred um, percent. So, if they feel like you're not part of that culture, or you won't be a part of that culture, they're gonna move on to the next player. Yeah. You know? so I think people have that misconception, like, okay, you're really good, but okay, there's a lot of good players out there too. You know, even yeah. like when you, I feel like if you're from a small city. Like, okay, like, you're great in that small city, but, like, okay, like, compared to the world, like, you may not be a nobody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, but my goodness, yeah. There's oh, there's so many people, because <laughs> Raleigh, Raleigh's a pretty big city, yeah. you know, um, and one thing that's popular over there is uh, is Sunday League. Uh, uh-huh. uh, we like to call it the Bean League, because <laughs> it's a lot of Hispanics. <laughs> um, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, so there's... That's really big over there. Uh-huh. Um, there's a bunch of leagues, but um, yeah, there's unfortunately there's there's such a bad mindset over there that these kids, you know, that grow up playing in that Sunday league, you know, they'll be playing with older men, which is awesome. Yeah. But then they get stuck in that world, you know, they mm. get stuck in that perspective that like, yeah. okay, this is the only league, and if I'm the top here, like I'm I'm big dog. Well, hey bud, like. That's one city out yeah. of, you know, how many, yeah. I don't know how many cities there are in the United States, and but, like, there's so many more pl- good players out there, and so if you're the best here, okay, so what? You know, there's more out there. <laughs> yeah, dude, I think I think that mentality, uh, if you want to be a great player, like, never has to get, like, you always have to be humble about it, right? Like, you can't lose that. Like, okay, like, even if I'm a big fish here, let me try to be the smallest fish in a bigger pond. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, that's going to help you grow. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. And that, I think that's what I'm I'm grateful is, um, like, my time at Belmont Abbey, uh, PDL was uh, starting to be a big thing, mm-hmm. which is like a semi-pro league over the summer and basically okay. helps, um, you know, college uh, athletes to, to get uh, looked at by – you know, professional coaches and just kind of get that exposure of high intensity. Um, now it's called USL two. Okay. Um, but yeah, so uh, ended up playing my first summer up in West Virginia. Um, that was an experience. Um, then my second Is, was it an experience because of like playing or like because of West Virginia? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I got some stories on that. But uh, my second summer played up in. Uh, in Virginia, and then my third summer, I interned with Charlotte Eagles, and so I got to practice with them. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, that team, that team was was dirty. Okay. Oh my gosh, I think eight or nine of those players now are pro. So oh, yeah, from that's that, awesome. That team man. alone, yeah, it's crazy. Um, that must have been a great culture that team had then, huh? Oh yeah, it was. It was awesome. It was one of the best summers ever. But um, yeah. Like having having that exposure and having that experience, um, I'm really grateful because it made me realize I wasn't good as I thought I was. Mm. You know, it made me like it humbled me because I was like, "Holy crap! There are so many good players out here, you know, and I just need to continue growing, yeah, you know, and find new ways." Because um, there's also like a, a misconception, like pe- a lot of players want to. Um, train their weaknesses like they they want to strengthen their weaknesses yeah. but the thing is like you do have strengths so why not strengthen those you yeah know? like for me um i always i'm i'm left footed i was uh you know really good with my left foot when it came to my right oh my goodness it was, <laughs> it was so bad it was another you know? sport <laughs> yeah 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 and like people people knew that you know they they knew and to this day they know that i have I don't have the best right foot. You know, now I can kind of use it because okay. I, I trained it a little bit. Um, no, like I remember people would always be like, he's only left footed. He's only left footed. And that would make me so mad because <laughs> it's like, I, I, like part part of me was like, um, part of my ego was like, well, I'm going to show you that I can go with my right. But that never worked because it was so bad. And so I would like lose the ball on a dribble or like it would be a horrible pass. Um, but I remember I got to a point where I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, keep me on my left foot, but I'm going to beat you. Mm. Um, 
And, and so I trained it really well and, um, continued to, to, you know, strengthen that. And now like, even if people know that I'm left footed and try to force me on my right, I'm still able to get by them. You know, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I remember, you know, there was a, we were playing, um, an alumni game, alumni versus, uh, Belmont Abbey, but it was their JV team. Okay. And, um, uh, one of the, my old assistant coach was yelling at this defender that he's only left footed. He's only left footed. And I was like, all right, all right. Received the ball, took him on the dribble, went to the left. Um, and I think I ended up giving a pat, like an assist. Um, but I basically blew by him. And I was like, <laughs> Like even if you tell him I'm yeah. I'm yeah because I know I know my strength yeah. you know and and as long because as long as I'm confident on my ability then I'm gonna be able to execute that yeah. you know because like if I know I've been training this and I know that this is my strength okay I I know that I'm gonna be able to 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 see the outcome mm. um yeah because a lot of a lot of players want to strengthen their weaknesses which is good yeah. you know which is good. But, hey, you have strengths, you yeah. know, so utilize those and strengthen those. And that's what's going to, yeah. you know, It's kind of like you. get better at your weaknesses but perfect your strengths, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, um, you know, that that's what makes you different. Yeah. You know, every, there's 11 players out on the field, you know, um, and each has a different, different aspect that they bring to the game, you know. Yeah. No one is going to be the same player, you know. Defenders are different from strikers. Yeah, you know, midfielders are different from strikers. They all have different, you know, playing playing styles and strengths. You know, so strength strengthen those strengths. You know, and and that right there is what you bring to the table. Yeah, you know, because again, soccer is not uh, uh, only sport. You know, it's not like yeah, it's not one v one. Exactly, exactly. So you, there's always a piece of you that's gonna uh, or a piece. Of your game that's gonna be brought to the table, yeah, you know? man. And, and with the collection, then that's when the artwork starts to happen. A hundred percent. Like I, I can think of teams like even like in the Premier and the City A, La Liga. Like okay, like you have your stars, but then you have people that are just workhorses. You have people that make the dressing room. There's people that keep it positive. Like all of this has to be mixed together. It's like baking a cake. Yeah. Like you can't just have the eggs. Like you need everything, right? Yeah. And so that's. That's the culture of creating a great a great team, you know. Yeah, and yeah, so a lot of a lot of players think that you know, um, because we're I I feel like we live in a in a society where like we see something on social media or we see something you know, and then we're like, we want that. Yeah, like we want to be them. Uh huh. You know, but like you're your own person. Hundred you know? percent, man. Like, God created you to be your own person, you know, and so. Just be the best person that you can be, mm. you know? Because I, I truly believe everyone was equipped, you know, with certain, like, your own talents, yeah, your, bro. Own, your own um, tools, I guess. Um, so, like, why not sharpen those? <laughs> That's good. I like that, man. Yeah. That's really good. So tell us a little bit about now, like, when you went from uh, just playing high school and playing uh, in uh, all these other leagues that you played into to playing in college what were the biggest differences that you saw there oh the speed of uh the game okay oh it was so much faster in college um you know people were playing one touch two touch um you really had no time i oh, i remember watching um uh one of the girls games uh-huh and they had so much space because they don't they don't high pressure you uh -huh. know um and so I remember seeing them that they they had so much space, and I was just like, I envy you guys, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, like you never have space, like you yeah. have to create that space for yourself, you mm. know. So, um, but in college, it was just it was high pressure. Yeah. Um, I feel like especially in the positions that you played, right, like in in the midfield, right? Yeah, in, in the midfield, um, I also played as a left wing back. Uh -huh. You know, um, they were always on top of you because they. They didn't want to give out the outside. So, yeah, it, it it was just so much faster. And the fitness. The mm. fitness sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. We we had so many. Uh, yeah, the, the beep test, I'm traumatized. <laughs> and every every college player knows. Every college player knows like, about uh -oh. the beep test. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the fitness, the fitness was one of the biggest things. Um, 
I remember, I think I was weighing like between 160, 165 in high school, and mm-hmm. then I dropped down to like 150, um, you know, 155. Um, and I was just, I looked, I look anorexic. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I would come, I would come home, I would come home, uh-huh. and my mom would be like, I mijo, you need to eat more. <laughs> like, let me feed Typical you. Spanish yeah. mom, like, concerned. Yeah. yeah, and she would fix me up a huge plate and, and, and try to feed me. I'm like, mom, no. <laughs> like, I'm really taking care yeah. of myself. I'm just, like, really, really in shape. Um, but the fitness was one of the biggest things, big game changer. Okay. Um, and uh, this is free advice. Um, one of my coaches, he gave me um, a tip, you know, or – saying he was like fitness is freedom and i was like what the mm, heck? okay yeah. explain that yeah and so he was like well the more fit you are the more freedom you have out on the field and the more you, you're, you're able to do more you, more, you know um because there's there's players that can go out there for for 90 minutes you know yeah but can they stay you know at this level for 90 minutes that's a different story you know because mm. a lot of players when it comes to like the final 20 they start their level starts to drop down and they're not as sharp on the ball they're not sh- as sharp on the dribble their touch becomes you know really bad um and so he was like you know when you're you're really fit you're able to have that freedom and you're able you're just playing on a different level and so um yeah i remember you know i would summers i would run like 10 miles i would uh Go out to the field and do one twenties, which is like full field sprints and okay. back, um, and just like try to tax my body. Um, yeah, the, my first summer in West Virginia, uh, I wore a hoodie and sweatpants, and I would go on uh, like two mile runs as fast as I could, and just like trying to shock my body and yeah. get it like, um, just try to get it used to like those what would feel like the last ten minutes, you know. Wow, it's like that's really good, man. Yeah. Oh, I, I. It was just a. Whole I mean, I'm, I'm, level. I'm sure it sucked. Like, oh, yeah. But like, <laughs> you, you can notice those differences. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what takes you from being a good player to a great player, right? Like, cause, like, you're right. Like, there's certain things in anything. Like, when it comes to like being successful, like, it's all about going that extra mile. Yeah. And I mean, like, you went that extra mile. You went the extra ten miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I. I truly believe you got to find ways to to be better, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and so I I would find new ways to to improve because I knew like you in games those those last ten minutes my body or yeah. my body would start aching. Can you so. think of a game specifically where you like saw that like you saw okay like everybody's like okay not doing great but like let me step up real quick. Um, in terms in, of like that physique. Yeah, in in my junior year, uh-huh. my junior year, um, I the first time I felt that um, was my junior year. No, it was my sophomore year of uh, spring season, and we were scrimmaging um, some team out in um, I don't even know where. It was somewhere <laughs> in North Carolina, um, but it was a small college. Yeah. I feel like um, outside of Charlotte and Raleigh, like okay, like yeah, everything else is not that big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was NAIA. Um, so never heard of them. Um, but I had a buddy that played for that team. Um, and I just remember there were uh, a, a, like three or four Hispanics, and I don't know why, but there, it, I I always feel like there's a battle with Hispanics. Like who's gonna be the better Hispanic? <laughs> I, I, I swear it's a thing. <laughs> um, I think, too, like, also, like, that or, like, when you go play and, like, say, like, I'm from Honduras and we bring, like, two or three Honduran kids and then, like, they're, I don't know, they're either Mexican or Colombian or something. Like, okay, like, we yeah. got to show them why our country's good or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think like, it's, relax, it's, bro. We're just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's pride embedded into yeah. each Hispanic yeah. co- <laughs> country because, like, we all want to be the best. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, there was there was just, like, Something in me that I was like, I want to be the best Hispanic out here <laughs> on the field, and I remember just taking over that game. Like, um, I would, I would, because I was playing as a left wing back, so I'd get it all the way from the bottom left of our half, you know, 
and I would dribble all the way and, you know, do some combinations, but I was just playing differently. And part of it was the fitness, you know, um, but uh, the other part was just like mentality. Mm-hmm. It was just like, okay, like I'm, I'm going to show you that I'm the better player. And so, um, yeah, that, that definitely changed the game. But as far as physique um, and, you know, my condition, I learned that real quick my <laughs> freshman year because <laughs> I, I went from starting uh-huh. um, and then it got benched because my fitness wasn't there, mm. you know. And he wanted, my coach at the time wanted, you know, people who were going to be able to provide really, like, that, 30 to 40 minutes of, of high intensity. Okay. And so I learned that real quick. So that following summer, that's when I did all that you started, running. Okay. Running in sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when I dropped a lot of weight, and I was, like, the fittest I've ever been. Mm. Um, Tell us, how important is mentality when it comes to playing in college? Oh, my gosh. it's uh, For me, I think not even in college, just in in life. Yeah. Um, I think it's – it's 90 percent you know Mm. of of what's going to be the outcome yeah because i've i've seen really good players who tank you know and it's because it's a mentality thing yeah you know and so um i think the mental aspect is more important than the actual like physical i would agree with you yeah like yeah because you can train i've seen people train all day you know and we'll train and and put hours of work but when it comes to games they choke you know and it's because they're not they're not prepared up there Mm. you know and so and that that's happened to me you know like i i would put in the work but i was so um i had low self-esteem that when it came to game i would choke and so i call them like really good practice players um there's a term but basically it's like players who are really good at training and will show out at training but when it comes to game time they where are they yeah yeah and and that was that was me so um um it's everything like and a part of it has to do with the coaching you know um that's that's why like i i have a such you know a sour taste on on some coaches that don't aren't passionate about the game because Mm. a coach makes or breaks a player you know Mm. they like they're the ones that are either going to help that player go far in life or they're going to be the ones that that absolutely injure them them. yeah exactly yeah because like the philosophy for our coaches in college wasn't necessarily to be make like produce the best players it was to produce the best people you know, and so I've seen so many coaches that will be basically the, I guess, like the the pusher to, to help them push towards being successful or they'll, they'll anchor them down. Pull them. Yeah, exactly. Um, and luckily, like, I had really good coaches that were able to, you know, help me um, become the best version of myself because if, if I didn't have – those kinds of uh, role models, you know, or, you know, mentors, I I would have had a different attitude on life. And, you know, I I would be very selfish, very greedy, um, very prideful, and it, I would just be a different player, mm-hmm. you know. But they taught me that, you know, life isn't only about the, the sport. Like, the way you translate yourself outside of the sport will also translate into the sport. That's good. That's really yeah. good advice, actually. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, like, that's what it, So, for me, like, I do a little bit of private training. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into that, and I tell every parent that comes out and training with me, like, I'm not going to make your player, um, you know, be become the next Messi or the next Ronaldo. Like, like if that's their goal, I'm going to help them, you know, achieve that yeah i'm gonna help them you know as far as that as long as like they want it but i tell them the the whole thing that i want to get out of each training session is that they they understand that one that they're hungry every single time so they want more and two that they're able to to realize like they're not good enough yet 
And so this is why I'm gonna continue to sharpen myself to be become the better, you know, player or yeah. person because um, I I just I I have a mentality of never set settling, like never being in your um, comfort zone. I always want to step out of my comfort zone because that's how I know I'm gonna grow. Yeah, man. And so I that's, that's where the magic happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I just I, I don't like that mentality of staying in your comfort zone. Yeah, because like then then how are you improving? You know, how are you gonna become uh, a better person? And so I like being out of my comfort zone because I know that that's gonna develop my character. You know, and because again, like I have an effect on people. I have an influence on people. Yeah, man. And so if I stay in this comfort zone and, you know, I don't learn how to care for people, I don't have compassion or I don't learn to listen to other people's stories, then, like, I'm I'm going to be a horrible friend. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be the best father that I can be. I'm not going to be the best player because then that leads to me being selfish and wanting to just dribble and not never pass and want to be like the yeah. the the main man you know so i never learned to be a team player so it, so again like that that mentality aspect of of never settling to be you know um just like eh you know just like saying an average person yeah average exactly player. Mm-hmm. yeah like i always want to be the best person that i can become and that translates you know to soccer to work to life yeah um, and so, so that's good. It's funny how like success principles can be applied in anything, right? Yeah. In <laughs> soccer, in life and whatever kind of work that you do, like having the mentality, like being kind, like listening to people, all these things are very important. Like I once heard, uh, someone say like, uh, people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Mm, it's so true, yeah. man. Right. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So awesome, man. Give us uh, your, your, your best piece of advice. If someone were wanting to play in college or just be successful in life, what would be that number one advice that you would give them? Ooh, that's tough. Hmm. Or if you have a combination of some, that's good too, man. <laughs> um, I mean, the best piece of advice I would give is be be a world changer. You mm. know. Um, I got introduced that word my senior year, and that has stuck with me ever since. And like I live for that that word. And what What does that mean to you? So, a world changer is basically someone who changes the world that you live in. You know, um, so not necessarily the entire world, but the world you're surrounding. So the people that y- it's in 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 your life. Yeah. Um. So, for example, that would be my parents. Um. My sisters, my friends, um, you know, like you, uh, you're in my world. So changing my yeah, world, bro. Exa- exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, so it's it's changing, changing. Um, you know the the people. Not well, not changing. You're, yeah. But you're 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 better. leaving like an imprint on people, right? Yeah. Exactly. And and it's it, but for the better. Yes. You know, because obviously you can yeah. you can be a bad influence, yeah. but it's being a good influence, yeah. you know. Um, and the reason I say that is because again, like it translates to everything. You yeah. Know? If if you're you're always wanting to be the best, you're gonna find new ways. Um Dang, to be good. To be better on the field. Yeah. You know, you're gonna find you're never gonna settle with, you know, just being the big fish in the small pond. You're always gonna want to go out to other, you know, find find new ways to get to a different pond and you know, be hungry. That's good, man. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, because so, when when you're in that that mentality, you also tap into that creativity aspect of uh, mm-hmm. of like your brain and how to do things, right? Like when you're looking to be the best, like you, you think, okay, good players are doing this. What can I do to be better, ex- right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like so, you, you keep knocking on doors till till the one that you want opens. Yeah. So I I strongly, you know. I'm firm about that word because nice. be a world changer. I love that, man. Cause you're right. Like you can change your world, but you never know. Like even if your world is small, you can impact somebody that's going to make even a bigger impact. Exactly. And you played and, a part of that. And then it keeps going. And then that itself is changing the entire world. So that's right, um, man. That's awesome, man. Well, awesome. Nando, thank you so much for coming on episode 15 of the golden boots podcast, man. Thank you for hosting me.